Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Coach, just what you could say about bringing in someone from inside of the ACC that's such a threat like Joe Girard III and why it was important for you to add that piece for this season? Well, Joe's a terrific player and uh, certainly have experienced that watching him and competing against him for four years. Uh, losing Hunter Tyson and Brevin Galloway last year, we thought we were really losing some three-point shooting. And uh, to give, really to create a little more space for these two guys, Chase and PJ. Chase, in terms of, of penetration, pick and roll game, and, and uh, PJ in the paint, we just felt like having more shooting would be really good for us. Joe's a guy that's going to be able to stretch defenses, but I also think he's a tremendous leader. And uh, he's a guy that uh, is extremely competitive. So it's always good to add guys like that to your locker room. Questions for a coach from the floor? Coach, we're going to go left side, right at the aisle. We'll bring the microphone in. <laughs> Brad, you've got an experienced group uh, there. Has this been a different camp than maybe some others that you've run and that maybe you let them kind of lead the way a little bit more than, than you do? A, a little bit. We've, we've had a bunch of injuries, though. That's been the only thing that's been a little, little frustrating. Um, Jack Clark is still battling uh, – the groin issue that he had at state and trying to come back from that. So he really hasn't done very much for us yet. Um, Joe and, and RJ both have had some sprained ankles and, and uh, Hemingway's had several injuries, hamstring most recently. And so we just kind of haven't been whole. Um, I'm excited to see what that looks like. Uh, the other thing, because we do have so many new guys and we have older, older new guys, but we have a lot of new guys. So there has been a lot of teaching still. Our, our system is probably a little more complicated than some, um, you know, really on both sides of the ball. Um, so we've, we've, we've spent a lot of time in the gym and, and watched a lot of film as a group uh, so far this year. Coach, from the podium, um, you reached Clemson 14 years ago and you had eight years as a head coach prior to that. That means about 40% of your life you've spent as a head basketball <laughs> coach. Okay. What have you learned along the way? Uh, to surround yourself with really good people, uh, you know, and try to enjoy the journey, probably those two things. Be, you know, I really try to recruit players that, that, that I enjoy spending time with. Um, coaching is hard, playing is hard, competing is hard, but it's also very rewarding and fun. Um, and when you compete with players and coaches that you love and, and love being around, um, you know, there's no better feeling than accomplishing something together in that situation. So um, I love my guys. I love my coaches. I think our culture and basketball family at, Kem at Clemson is extremely strong. And, and uh, you know, for that, I have the th I'm very thankful and blessed and have a lot of people that are responsible for that. Other questions for Coach from the room? Coach, we'll go back to your uh, left right on the aisle. Hey, Brad. Pete Iacovelli with the AP. Um, the commissioner this morning said that maybe he suggested that next year not all 18 teams get to the ACC tournament. Is that something you could get behind? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I haven't. First, I've heard of that. Um, haven't thought about it a great deal. Um, I understand why. Um, it's probably going to mean more days, and, and at that time of year, it's really challenging. Um, at the same time, you know, it's every kind of conference uh, in some way, shape, or form, you know, if you don't make the NCAA tournament, your conference tournament is your chance. Um, and so you'd be taking that away from some teams. Um, it doesn't happen often uh, where low-seeded teams win, but – um, the fact that you kind of get, get that chance, you know, um, I'm an old school Indiana guy, I still wish we didn't have class systems and, and it was just everybody got to be in the same tournament. So you know, that would be a little challenging. I understand probably there's a lot more behind it um, logistically and timing wise, but uh, I probably, probably be, would be for more teams uh, than not making sure that they get to participate. Coach, back to your right first row. Coach, looking at what's, what is coming up with the addition of those three schools in Cal, Stanford, and SMU, being a coach in a conference of 18, just 
what that sounds like and what that thought process is. You already have 20 ACC yeah. games, so what's your take on You know, it, it, it's definitely much different. I've been in the league long enough that <coughs> back when there was 12 teams, um, and it's changed a great deal. And obviously the more teams you have, it's it makes it much more difficult to make it feel like we're all – the same and competing together. We don't we don't get to know each other as well when you only play somebody once every so often. Um, I used to think it was crazy in football that you had teams that wouldn't even play each other in the same league. Um, obviously, the more times you play somebody, the more you get to know them, the more there's you know a rivalry can develop. Um, but certainly, this is new era in, in athletics. Many things are changing, and expansion is part of that. And so, certainly, welcome. You know, Cal, Stanford, and SMU to the ACC. It's a phen phenomenal league. Um, I, you know, I love this league. I've been in it a long time, and um, so I'm. I think they will. They will learn to love it as well. Coach, thank you. You can switch spots with Chase. Oh. <laughs>